welcome to the first ever podcast episode. I'm here with my good friend Daryl Hall II, and uh, he, we're going to be talking with him today and just about his photography life. So let's get started. Uh, tell me about yourself. Who are you, and what are you doing with your life? Hi, I'm Daryl, and yeah, pretty much I'm in college right now, second year going on to third year. I plan on majoring in sustainability, and with that comes understanding what's green for the environment pretty much, and finding the better resources that don't harm our earth. A little bit about myself is I'm very adventurous. I like to go out. I like to go on hikes a lot. I um, usually go on a lot of hikes with my, my girlfriend around Austin. And we pretty much rate them on a basis of uh, if it's nice looking, if it's hard, or if it's long. And if we can even like swim in it, sometimes there's lakes. Uh, I have a dog, her name is Genesis, and I like to take her out for walks. It's one of my greatest pastimes. Um, yeah, pretty much I'm open-ended and I like to do everything. Uh, so what are your, so what are your favorite spots to go hiking in Austin? A few that I've been on that I have really enjoyed was in the Greenbelt area. It's a little past Zilker Park and in the Greenbelt area, there's a trail called Twin Falls. And first time uh, my girlfriend and I trailed it was uh, around spring break time of uh, the semester. And it was pretty dry because there was no rain. So we didn't really get to experience the Twin Falls per se, but we did see the rocks. We saw the floor bed of where the river would be. But the hike in general was about five miles. We didn't go all the way, but we went about three miles into it. So it took us about an hour to get through. And then we found a spot that we liked and we went into the water, chilled for a bit, came out and then hiked back. It was off the highway. Um, another hike that I really enjoyed was, um, I think it was also in, in the Greenbelt area because Greenbelt is pretty much like a, a generalized area for all the trails. So I don't remember this other trail, what the name it was, but it was really nice. It was um, overseeing a lot of trees and the wooded area in Austin that you don't really get to see when you're on the highway or when you're walking through downtown. So, yeah. So uh, moving on just a bit, what do you plan to do with your time at UT? What, what are your end goals? Um, I know you spoke about your uh, sustainability major and you, you want to do good for the environment, but what, what do you think you can do with your time here at UT? Yeah. Um, with the time here at UT, I really want to social network and get to know as many people as possible, like not to do it on purpose, but accidental runs into people and understanding who they are as a person. And I would also like to um, uh, get into different organizations that I can really connect with, with other people. And I would also like to, you know, further my education through maybe going to grad school um, after completing sustainability in undergrad. Yeah, uh, it sounds like a pretty good usage of time. Was that 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 was your dog Genesis, correct? Yes, it was. <laughs> she uh, she back up here. Yeah, she did kind of appear out of nowhere. So uh, tell us about how you got into photography, so we can kind of turn the subject uh, to what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, um, I would say I kind of always had a thing about photography when I was little. It probably started around when I was in middle school, I would say, because I lived in Germany because my dad was a, a U.S. soldier. So we lived in Germany for quite a while and we would always go to tourist locations, sceneries. And at the time I had an iPod touch, so nothing too fancy, but it was an iPod touch fifth generation. 
So the camera was pretty good. It wasn't the best, but for a kid in middle school to take pictures, it was pretty good. And I remember I would always think outside the box when we would go to these places. For example, I went to the Neuschweinstein Castle in Germany. We went all the way up in the tower and we went off the balcony. And I remember holding my iPod really tightly, putting it over the edge because it was a good 200, 300 feet from the ground. And I wanted to take that picture and I did. And from then on, I've pretty much been hooked on photography. Although in middle school, I wasn't really into taking pictures of myself per se. I was able and enjoyed to take pictures of things. So subjects that weren't really people, it was more of architecture or buildings that I thought were really cool. Um, now, photography really sprung out for me in high school, especially during my freshman year. I was in this graphic design course that allowed me to obtain the prerequisite to get into a trade school that our school district also had. So with uh, this graphic design class, we touched into a lot of Adobe products. We touched into Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe um, Bridge, things like that. And I was able to figure out like, what did I like in each program? What, was it, what I was able to do for each program. And I found that in Adobe Photoshop, I was able to put in my own photos and edit them the way I wanted without having it looking too cartoon, too unrealistic. So I felt that Photoshop was my favorite thing. And I found out that I was able to go into the photo class once I completed that graphic design course. So uh, next year, my sophomore year, I was able to go to the trade school. It's called the Career Center here in our district. And um, yeah, I was able to get into the Photoshop class and it was a beginner class. So with that being said, I was able to learn all the basics for Photoshop, basics on a Canon camera. I learned on a Canon camera, so I like Canon the best. and. I was able to learn different techniques, different settings that I wasn't able to learn by myself. I was able to learn different styles of shooting. And that was pretty good because our teacher, he would make us do different types of projects, different types of shoots so we can expand our skills, expand our genre of photography. And I found that taking pictures of I would say buildings and abstract photos of objects outside of the school was my favorite thing to do. I didn't really like taking model pictures, pictures of people, because I was not a good person to make them feel comfortable in the situation because anybody who takes their own picture by somebody else, if there's not a good relationship between the shooter and the model, it can get pretty awkward. So. I drifted away from there. I did it for the assignments, but that was pretty much it. I didn't go out of my way to take pictures of people. Now, there was an assignment where we had to take a picture of a grad, a graduate, or soon to be graduate. So a senior in high school, we had to find a senior, take their senior pictures as a beginner photographer, edit them and make them a grad card. Now, this wasn't to make them have their own pictures. I wasn't asking them for money. This was me going out trying to test their skills. And so that was pretty much as far as I got to with modeling pictures and pretty much the end of the uh, school year. Now, um, my next year, junior year, I didn't take the intermediate photo class. I took a break and I went into a, a sport wrestling and I did a little bit of photography on the side. I rented a camera out from my home campus and it wasn't really anything special. It was just a rebel and I was able to do basic photography. I didn't have any special lenses. I didn't have any flashes. So it was a camera um, and it's body lens. That was the basic stuff I had. So I just, played with the camera, did scenery photos, 
I took pictures of the sunset. I took pictures of lakes and such. And I used Adobe Lightroom that I learned through the beginner class. And I know some skills on Adobe Lightroom where I can attach photos and make a pano from stitching many photos together. And I also took my best friend's senior pictures and they turned out pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to give myself credit or anything, but I felt that I did a pretty good job. I used uh, the app Pinterest to get a lot of ideas because I wasn't in no photo class, so I couldn't ask anybody. So I used Pinterest as a go-to for ideas and for stage models for uh, my senior friend, Christoph. And that shoot, I did get paid about $80 for. So I wasn't too, too mad about that. It was one of my first gigs, I would say. And then senior year came and I didn't want to do sports anymore. I wanted to do the second class of the photo photography class at the career center. So took my intermediate photography class senior year of high school. And in this class, the I would say technique requirements were increased. Your skills were expected to be higher than normal. So I had to, re I pretty much remembered everything from beginning photography. So going into intermediate photography, it seemed natural. And I had good relations with the teacher. So I didn't really stress about assignments or things like that. The only thing I really stressed about was I would say, um, trying different things that I'm not really used to. For example, taking pictures of people. Um, some things that were different was I had to choose a, a topic of photography and send those pictures in for a contest. And I chose architecture and I went out to different places around Texas, big cities such as Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, to take architectural pictures and submit them for a contest. Um, that was a pretty big highlight of my fall semester of senior year. And after that, it pretty much died down. We just did assignments here and there. I was ready to get out of school, so I wasn't really too motivated. However, I did leave a good impact in that class because a lot of people look to me for reference or they look to me for guidance and photography. So. I knew I was pretty good at photography and a lot of kids in the class would ask me like, what do you plan on doing once you graduate? And I would uh, tell them, yeah, I'm going to go to school for, uh, uh, at the time I wanted to be a business major. So I would tell them I'm going to graduate high school and be a business major. And they were really confused because they thought I would go straight into photography out of school. And no, that just wasn't me. So yeah. And then, uh, after senior year, my parents bought me a mirrorless camera for my grad present. So going into college, I would always have a camera with me so I could take it with me. If I went hiking, if I went somewhere special, I could just snap a shot of either me or the background, whatever I liked. So that's pretty much my history and what got me into photography. So you have a pretty huge background in photography, You've taken a lot of classes, training. So kind of going back into what you were saying, would you say that that castle photo was your first like photography photo that you ever took? Or what do you consider like the first photo that you ever took in a photographer mindset? Yeah, I would say that photo in the castle was not my first photo in a photographer mindset. I feel that my first photo in a photographer mindset was probably in class because so, uh, yes, sophomore year of high school was my beginner photography class. And one of the first things he showed us was the manual setting for cameras. He didn't let us shoot on auto. He wanted us to shoot manual so we could understand our ISO, aperture, and our shutter speed. And those are pretty much the three key things you need to know when you take manual shots. And the first day of class, he took us out and gave us a basic rundown of having our ISO at 100 when we're outside because it was sunny, 
having our shutter speed around 60 or more and having our aperture around four. So we're able to get some decent shots out there and having a automatic, um, automatic focus. So we didn't shoot any uh, manual focus. And I feel that day was probably the day that I shot in a photographer's mindset and I was shooting a, a partner of mine. And basically we just uh, sit across from each other. Like if it was a, a, a uh, like a one-on-one -on -one. and we shot pictures of each other and it was a little weird at first because it was our first time shooting pictures, you know, back and forth like that and having a different mindset while taking pictures. And yeah, I would say that day was my first day and first picture taken that I did in a photographer's mindset. Uh, so I know that you've mentioned a lot that you don't think that taking photos of other people is your strong suit, but I would beg to differ. So kind of to show some examples that I have. Um, oh man, I can't see what I'm looking at. There it is. Um, so kind of looking at your Instagram, I know that you have some portraits on here, like of yourself, but like, for example, this one, I'd argue is a very well done portrait. I like the background, the subject is clear, the lighting is nice, there's no shadows or anything. So what, why do you say that your portrait photography is not your strong suit? Yes. I feel, yeah, these, these photos I took were, I feel really good. I, I enjoy taking these photos because my friends at the time, they, they, um, they were just models. I just asked them, you know, Hey, can you come this day? Just come, uh, prepare to get your photo taken. And looking at their outfit of the day, I chose the color and background, but mind you, I did go to a career center school. So the class I was in, the photography class, our teacher, he, that was his full-time gig. Other than being a teacher, he was also a, a photographer. So he knew what we needed for our assignments. These two photos I took of uh, these people, they were an assignment photo and they had requirements. So I made sure I got the requirements, but we had a different room other than our normal classroom. And excuse me, when in that different room, it was called the studio. Um, obviously because of different things we could do in there. But we had many different backgrounds. We had a steel fence, a wooden fence, a chain fence with also, I would say like any type of flash that you could think of. If it, even if it was a off camera flash, on camera flash, different types of um, lights, such as the circle light that the eye lighter light, the, um, there's a light that goes on the bottom of the, the subject and that gives that little light on the eye and gives it a little sparkle. And that was the whole point of these two shots. But yeah, I really enjoyed taking these two photos. And I would say the reason why they came out really good is because I tried really hard and I wanted to make sure I did a good job on the assignment. And another thing is, is that I had the resources to make these photos come out really nice. I had the light that changed colors to blue, to red. I also had the resources of having a metal fence or a wooden fence for the background. So I would say if I myself would go out and take photos of people like this, I would need the resources and the, I would say, added flair that costs a lot of money. And for me to produce something like this, I don't have the equipment to do so. So I would say if I had the equipment, I would be really good at taking professional photos like this. But since I don't, I don't consider my picture taking of other people like as good. But these are because I had good, um, good equipment with me. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, speaking of equipment, what gear do you use? What is your setup? Back in high school, we had all the different type of gear you can imagine, different types of lenses, the expensive lenses. We would use fishbowl lenses, or sorry, fisheye fishbowl. We would use specific portrait lenses that could go down to about 1.2 aperture. And we would have 50 millimeter lenses that we would use for portraits, our basic go-to. We would use topographic lenses for football games. We had monopods, tripods. We had um, different type of uh, straps for the camera that we could just use because our teacher at the time, he he literally gave us like all the equipment we would need that would cost, cost us, I would say thousands of dollars out of our own pocket if we didn't have uh, the equipment he set for. We also had, I would say, good bags, good traveling bags. We, we had different types of lens filters that we were able to use. We had off-camera flashes. We had um, clickers that could take the picture from a distance. We had tether lines. We had um, remote control. Um, remote control clickers, I would, I would pretty much describe it like that. Um, we had expensive co camera bodies. We had expensive camera lenses, but all those are good. But I feel that right now with my own personal camera equipment, the gear I use is pretty much basic um, gear. I just have a traveling bag I can just put on my back. I have a decent tripod. I want to say it's crazy, but it does do the work. It's pretty sturdy. I have a mirrorless camera. And with the mirrorless camera, I also have a attachment that I can put on uh, the mirrorless to get EOS lenses. I use a Canon flash. And even though I don't use the, the flash all too much, I I do use the camera, the mirrorless camera with the kit lens at the moment. And yeah, it's pretty much all the gear I use for my photography right now. So, yeah. And you use a Canon N50, that's your, your camera? Yes, that's my mirrorless that I use now. So uh, I know you had that gifted to you, but if you could go back and change that, what gear would you select now? Now, if I could go back and change the gear, I would first change the camera. I know this is impossible, but there is a new mirrorless, the one that combines um, a DSLR and a mirrorless together. I believe you have it, right? The Canon R? Yes, the Canon R. I would love to... It's a full frame um, mirrorless yeah. camera. Yeah. Yeah, the full frame. I would love to have the full frame Canon R. And I would say I would stick to the same tripod I have because um, I don't do anything too crazy, but it does it does do its job and it gets what I want to to be done. And I feel I would also have different types of lenses. I would have a a portrait lens, which is like a 50 millimeter lens. I would also have a fisheye lens. I would have a topographic lens. Um, now these are like a wish list. <laughs> like these, 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 uh, this gear that I, I am listing is very expensive and I probably won't ever obtain, but I'm just going off a wish list if I had unlimited money. Um, I would purchase um, when I comfortable neck strap, because I know my neck strap, it can get very irritating and itchy on the neck, especially when it's hot and sweaty, it, it gets very itchy. So I would get a comfortable neck strap. And honestly, I'll probably just get a, a wrist strap for the camera because I find myself wrapping the neck strap around my wrist a lot. And that's pretty much how I go about, um, holding my camera when I'm walking and I would, uh, invest in a monopod because 
they're pretty useful, especially when you're moving a lot and there's not a lot of space for the tripod. Um, yeah, I would invest in gear so where I could get astrophotography um, equipment. But yeah, it's pretty much where I would go for gear if I could go back in time. I'm just going to say now, don't get into astrophotography. It is so expensive to be able to shoot just a high quality image. Get into it. I love it. It's it's amazing. But I mean, to get like absolutely like amazing pictures of stuff, you, you have to spend a lot of money. I mean, you can do stuff with basic setups, but you know, the, the best you're going to get is like the Orion Nebula and the Milky Way, which you right. can do that with K lenses, honestly. Um, so, but you can always, you know, feel free to get into astrophotography. It's just, it's, it's expensive. And I'm only like a beginner at it still, um, even though I have a Star Tracker and um, I'm about to properly buy a telescope finally. But anyways, um, <laughs> enough about me. Uh, I know I broke your film virginity, but do you ever plan on film or using film or shooting film? Yeah, I, re I remember when we went to uh, go uh, shoot film. Actually, we were supposed to do um, a different type of photography, but I believe both our batteries were dead, right? Uh, uh, that was the second time, actually. So the first uh, time, the first time I had a camera, and you also had a camera of they're both film cameras and i actually found that roll of film that you shot recently so i'm gonna get it developed it's, it's in my car right now but unfortunately with everything being closed right now um i haven't i have like six rolls of film that are just waiting to be developed um but yeah we went and shot at the 360 bridge and we went and shot at um I can't remember what it's called hancock park or something like that it, it's the That's one with the peacocks Yes. Um, but, and then a second time we went out onto uh, Congress. To, uh, oh, Congress. Congress. Yeah. And both, we, I forgot my batteries to, or I forgot an SD card or something, and your batteries were dead. Yeah. And I think you gave me your, um, your film camera. And I think, yeah, and you had your other film camera, right? Mm hmm. Right. And then, yeah, we went out and I shot about two or three and that was pretty much it. And yeah, but I mean, me personally, I would shoot film again just because of the aesthetic and the fact that I've never used those cameras, but knowing those cameras do have a, its own specific aesthetic, I would shoot just for that because I don't know. I kind of like vintage photography in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cheap to get into, but it's expensive in the long run for sure. Like uh, the camera that you're shooting on was a Pentax SB, and I bought that with the lens for like seventy five dollars. And then you know, a roll of film is you can get a roll of film for around ten bucks, a nice roll. Right. So it's, it's cheap to get into, but the more effort you want to put into it, the more expensive it gets and the better quality you want, the more expensive it gets. So, you know, if you want better quality film, it costs more. If you want a better camera, one that does everything for you, it's expensive. Well, right. relatively for something that's analog. Um, but yeah, moving on to the, uh, from that, uh, who... Or what is your inspiration for, for photography? I don't have a who, although I, I used to like a specific photographer's uh, style. But what is the important question that I will answer? Because when I first started photography, I didn't really have a purpose. Although through the years of me shooting random things or assignment based projects, I found myself shooting. And one thing I learned that kept um, my inspiration for photography was the, 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 the final product and 
the emotion it evoked in the subject, such as if I took a picture of someone and they saw themselves and they didn't expect it to be a good photo, but when they see it, they just, you know, go, wow, you know? And they're like, this is so nice. And just knowing that you put in the man hours, the work and the dedication to produce that final product and for them to actually love it and get that blood flowing is what really inspires me. Also, I guess um, another inspiration is, again, evoking emotion, but not only in modeling photography, I would say in architectural photography. Um, I really liked taking pictures of objects and buildings or bridges and putting an edit on there and just really making it my own. And but not only editing, it's more of how I took the photo, how abstract did I take the photo? Because one of the important things I like to do when I shoot architecture is to capture the, the object in a perspective where most people don't look at the object. That's what really makes the picture captivating to others. So when I find that right angle, the, the moment I click it, I feel, you know, at first, all right, this can be something. And once I go into the photo, the Photoshop or either Adobe Lightroom, I do quick edits there. And then I spend a good day or two just looking at the photo. What can I change? And what I, one important thing I like to do is not to make it too unrealistic. So I like to keep it natural as possible, yet giving it a good finish. And one of my inspirations is to have people look over me or look at the photo and then just be baffled by how good it looks. So that's one of my inspirations for my photography. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, I definitely agree with you. And the first part of that is like, I, I love seeing the end result. And I love whenever I show something to someone and they're just like, wow, you can do this with a camera, you know? And right. um, yeah, it's definitely an amazing feeling. So yeah, and also going to, um, your architect so this is an example here this is the pennybacker bridge um so you definitely have a really good eye for for architect i i love your style um it's definitely your um like your strong suit what you specialize in um but yeah you have a really good eye for that so it's just it's interesting to see um because i feel like architecture uh, photography is not something you see a lot of with the younger photographers and you do an extremely good job of, of um, bringing out its good qualities thank you um so we've talked a lot about architecture and um about portraits uh so what would you define as the subject how would you define it in your own terms I would define the subject as the entity that you're trying to portray in your photo, whether it be in focus, whether it be centered or uncentered, whether it be a different perspective looking at the subject, I feel that the subject is what you're trying to portray to the eye of the beholder. I'd say that's a really good answer. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, uh, it's definitely what you want the audience to be drawn to. So, you know, we, we've talked a lot about photography and everything. So now is your chance to say, what are, what are some tips and tricks that you would offer to uh, new photographers, current photographers, experienced people? What, what would you give as your advice? For someone coming into photography as a beginner or as someone who has little um, work in photography, I would suggest, you know, if you are a person who gets upset easily when things don't come out right, I feel that you need to be very patient. You need to be very understanding in what you're doing. For example, I feel you need to understand how the camera works, especially with the important variables such as your lighting, your shutter speed, your subject, 
and the other outside variables such as wind, sun, um, shadows. Those are very key things you should look out for as a beginner because once you figure those things out, you should be pretty much set because you can expand on, on those variables. I would say also keep shooting every day. If you want to progress, keep shooting every day and shoot different things. Walk around your neighborhood, shoot, um, I would say shoot plants, birds, uh, if you have any trees, houses, you know, you got to keep shooting to understand your skill and keep building and try to get better each time. Um, and I would also say if you're really trying to get into photography and really hone your skills, take your camera everywhere you go. And if something you want to take a picture of and you want to take a picture of it, then go ahead and take a picture of it and, you know, find a different angle that people don't normally see your subject in because in the finished product, when someone sees it, their first instinct is going to be, wow, this is really different. I've never seen something like this in this angle. And that's what really captivates your, your viewers. So those are a couple of my tricks that I like to think about each time I go and shoot. So. Yeah, I mean, that definitely gives me some uh, inspiration to go out and shoot. I've been, uh, to be <laughs> honest, lacking right now with the quarantine and everything that's been going on. Yeah, me too. I haven't shot since the last time we went out in Salco. I've been pretty busy with school, taking summer classes and uh, doing some work. Um, do you shoot to capture the moment or to tell a story? And how do you know this? I would say me personally, I like to shoot to capture the moment. I haven't been one to shoot for a story. I feel my skills and techniques have led me to shoot in the moment rather than shoot for a story. I feel that if I led into shooting for a story, I would go more into the journalism route. And um, I feel that if you, feel, if you shoot for a story, you're really portraying a, of course, a story for your viewer. For example, uh, these protests that are going on, the, these, these signs, the, the meaning behind this protest, if you went out and took pictures of the protesters and the signs and what's going on in today's life, that is creating a story in your photography. And you're also capturing the moment, I would say, at the same time, but it's really creating a story and with the picture you take, of course, a picture is worth a million words. And when you put multiple pictures that you've taken of an event, it's creating a story that people can relate to, or they can evoke their own emotion into the story or to the other photographs you've taken. Now me, I like to take pictures in the moment. Um, for example, in my, um, of course, Instagram, it's basically, just a, a picture here and there, nothing really to evoke a story emotion. It's more of like, wow, that's really cool. Or wow, that's really interesting. How'd you do that type of stuff? Um, yeah, that it's not really, I would say the, the story aspect. I really like to take pictures that capture the moment to make people think about different aspects of um, the, their out, their outdoors and, such yeah and i was just scrolling through it for some examples uh so what keeps you motivated what keeps you shooting every day or at least as much as possible um i really like to i would say okay this is gonna be a little weird but if i bought equipment that would really get me motivated to go out and take pictures and test it out that's a big motivator since I haven't gotten new equipment recently, I haven't really had the motivation to go out, especially during this COVID-19 quarantine. It's been a little bit of a hassle. Um, I would say motivate, other things that motivate me would be going on social media, like photography accounts that show how to do a specific photo and for me to try it myself. And I would also say, 
Another, another motivation would be having someone that also likes photography and going out with them to take pictures. Like you and I, it'd be like, hey, you want to go out? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm down. You know, that really gets me motivated to take pictures and really hone my skills and trying my best, you know, in the photography that we're, we're going for. But I would say that's pretty much my motivation. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, so we've already talked about your favorite type of photography, which is architect. Is that correct? Yes. So would you say that you specialize in architect photography or would you specialize in something else? I would say, this is my personal answer. I don't feel like I specialize in any photography. I feel like I'm very flexible. I'm not very in depth in any style. I'm very broad, I'm very general in each style of photography. I I would say I like nature and scenery. I feel I could specialize in scenery photography because there's a little bit of architecture skills you can use in scenery photos. Um, but other than that, I really don't feel like I specialize in any specific photography. That's uh, very interesting to say. I, I'm surprised that you didn't say that you specialize in architect photography. But, you know, I I can definitely I agree with you and my own sense that I don't feel like I specialize in photography. I just feel like I'm good at certain types of photography, but I don't necessarily specialize in them. Right. Uh, so... Going back to your Instagram, this is a photo that you took in New Orleans after the Sugar Bowl, uh, correct? Correct. Um, you haven't posted in over a year, so why is that? I would say the main reason is due to school, and um, I would also say the lack of motivation. Also, I would say that uh, I haven't really posted, even though I have taken other pictures, I just haven't posted them for the reason of, excuse me, reason of editing. I would say I'm not a big person in editing because I haven't done it in a while and it's very complex. Um, so usually if I took a picture um, of, an, of a bridge, for example, I know what filters would look good on the bridge, uh, like an HDR filter on the bridge with a high contrast and different little aspects. I know with those um, settings adjustments, I can make the photo pop out and stand out. Now, with uh, taking pictures of a person, I know that editing is very different with a, with a person you have to pay attention to different things. And I feel, I feel that's very complex and very um, long, and I don't have the motivation to do that. I generally put off editing a lot after taking a photo because I dread editing because of the amount of time it takes me to edit. Um, but I haven't posted in a year or in over a year, most likely due to that. And I haven't really been out, I would say, which is kind of sad. I haven't really been out um, taking pictures. Now, I would say the last time I really gone out was a camping trip where I went with a group of friends and I to a cabin. But instead of pictures that time, my girlfriend and I wanted to take a vlog type of, um, I guess, capturing the moment. We were trying uh, vlogging our trip in the cabin. And... That was very different because I've never vlogged before. So that that was a different uh, aspect of, I would say, using my camera. And that was pretty much the last thing I've used major on my camera. So I haven't really been doing anything else. That's why I haven't really posted in a year. That cabin trip was over spring break, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so right before everything hit. Um, right. Yeah, so you kind of know my world of things of, of blogging. It's it's definitely a challenge to to blog and to take pictures at the same time because you want to capture both of the moments, but you don't necessarily have the tools or the the drive to do both at the same time. So that's something I've been struggling with personally. Um, so 
let's take a look at your um your your pricing and everything like that so have you had any major clients <laughs> i have not had major clients ever i the reason why i have um pricing and listing is because in my senior year of high school in my intermediate photo class one of the requirements and an assignment we had to do was create a what you could call a business type uh, website where for example if I wanted to graduate high school go straight into photography I already had my pricing listed my um, what to expect different types of things in my portfolio to show my clients if I wanted to go into it uh, I had different packages I honestly completely forgot that I, I even made this so <laughs> um, I yeah I had a, an assignment and all these requirements were for I would I think it was like the final exam equivalent equivalent to the final exam so I put a lot of good work into my uh, pricing policies a la carte um, all that stuff I put a good input in that just in case anything failed and I had to use photography as a a uh, getaway plan I have so not had Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, so I haven't had major clients. Um, I've only done about two or three paid shoots, and that's pretty much it. And they're you, all about graduation. Have you done anything unpaid before that was like a, a big deal to you? I have not, actually. Uh, and as far as, as pricing goes, what did you use to price this? Because, like, I personally use, like, a square inch method of pricing yeah. things. So, like, I charge, like, 30 cents per square inch or something like that. Um, I honestly didn't use specific calculations for specific pricing. I... Um, pretty much did a guesstimate i went online and said how much does like a 24 by 30 usually cost and i basically gauged my price through there i didn't um i didn't really do any like square inch or included the ink price or the paper price so hmm. so this is just the cost of what you thought you would you would sell it for yes Um, so I know you've mentioned a lot about Lightroom, uh, and Illustrator and Photoshop, but is there any other software that you use to edit your photos? I know before I got into photography and I would take pictures with my phone, I would use different photo apps and, um, edit through there. But honestly, after realizing what Adobe has to offer and, using and utilizing Lightroom and Photoshop. And even on my phone, when I take mobile photos, I, that's pretty much where I am right now is mobile photography because I do have the iPhone 11 Pro and the camera system on that phone is, for me, it's what I want, it's what I need. And I can manipulate the, the camera on the phone to do things that I could do that I probably couldn't do with my kit lens and kit settings from my mirrorless camera, such as making the aperture very low to really get that portrait photography. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say that, um, wait, can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Uh, I was just saying like, what, what other software do you use? Oh, yeah. So the software, I pretty much stay in Adobe, Photoshop, and Lightroom. Yeah, I, I don't go to, I would say, third parties for softwares to edit because I'm more comfortable in Photoshop and Lightroom because that's where I learned, so. 
Yeah, I, I don't really know of any like third party uh, editing um, apps other than like Facetune. Right. I don't really use anyways. Um, it's funny that you say all this because I remember sitting down with you learning how to use Photoshop and that's what sparked my interest into learning Photoshop. And then eventually I learned how to use Lightroom on my phone and then that yeah. I finally got a bit the bullet and got the Adobe Suite. I pay, you know, like twenty dollars a month for it, and yeah, um, and I am really not good, but I'm decent now at Photoshop just because, like, you sat down with me that one time and yeah. uh, learned, taught me how to use it and stuff. So. Yeah, and then um, bringing it back to like different software I use, and that you mentioned Lightroom on your phone. Now I remember where I was going with with my uh, phone. I like to take pictures on my phone now more than I guess my mirrorless camera because it's always with me. And one of the apps I use is Photoshop Express. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, since I have uh, my Adobe account, I'm able to have more access on that app than you know, a person who doesn't have the account or subscription. And oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, there's some things that you are able to do that you weren't able to do if you weren't a subscriber to Adobe. But um, one of the cool things I really like about the app is that there's so much more editing tools on that app than any other app I've used for um, the photos that you have on your phone. And even better, once you have that app on your phone and you have it synced to your account, you're able to go onto that app after you're done after you're done editing that photo, and if you want to edit it even more, because not gonna lie, there are some tools on there that aren't exact. For example, the blemishing tool and stuff like that. Um, if you wanted to use, you know, Photoshop on your laptop, you can send it from your phone to your laptop, and I and I feel like that's one of the coolest things I've seen. Yeah, uh, I. Uh didn't know that logging into it could open up more features. So I'll definitely have to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm still a beginner here. <laughs> so um, just to kind of wrap it up, I know that you talked about sustainability as like what you're going to do. So like, what are your plans for the future? Um, whether or not that involves photography. Yeah. Um, I feel photography will always be with me since I have those skills. I, I'm not, never going to lose them. And since I do have my personal camera with me and, excuse me, um, I'm able to really go anywhere I want and take pictures as long as I have that camera with me. So I would say, yeah, I, I don't have major plans for photography in the future. However, it will always be with me. So, yeah. Well, Daryl, uh, you know, it's about time to wrap this up. So I really appreciate you sitting down and talk with me for about an hour now. So I, I know you could be doing a number of other things with your time. So I really appreciate you sitting down and uh, answering these questions. So do you have any final thoughts, anything to say? Yeah, it was a pleasure. I actually really found it exciting to do uh, my first podcast as well. And I honestly, I would, I've always wanted to do a podcast. So you invited me to this and opening up my um, futures to this is very exciting. So I want to thank you for inviting me and talking with me, you know, and asking me these questions because I really haven't talked like this. So, yeah. <laughs> I hear someone coming in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, just to wrap this up, I once again, I'm thanking you for joining me for, our, for the first ever podcast episode. Uh, and to kind of speak on this more, I plan on doing more episodes, hoping to speak with uh, some more of my photography friends. So if you have any uh, photography friends, just send them this way and I will talk with them on a podcast. Uh, but yeah, um, just to kind of end it, if, if you're watching this uh, later on, thank you so much for watching it to the end. And don't forget to like and subscribe.